Pleasure. I'm going to ask you to pass me another piece of Danish. You want something? You like cheese? No, no, no. This is good. Oh, because there's something that's really very good. This is uh, what I call rolled buns. Rolled buns? It's chocolate. <laughs> no, this is rolled. Uh, uh, you know there's what something that's even better. You know well, what a rolled bun you. is? No. How do you like the new woman? Uh, well, wait, I just want to show Bill that he likes the Danish too. Oh, yeah, let him have one of those. He can eat it. Bill, these are good. These, these are, are real rich, Bill. These are very good. Okay, Jesus now we can we, now, now we can li listen All right, to the story. Better? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, from you want to cut some up? He'll uh, he said it turns them on. <laughs> <laughs> I figured as much. Story. You like it? Yes, I do. Uh, it looks very natural. That's it. We had uh, we had this party the other night, the, the Hadassah's fiftieth anniversary. So I I wore it. So I it's a pleasure. You don't have to sit in the beauty parlor. Do you notice how long it took me to put it on? Okay. Story okay. about your grandfather. Yes. What yes. was his name? Peret. His real name was Peret Safir. That that was the name that he was. Uh, that, but they called him Shapiro because I guess when he got to Castle Garden, they didn't know anything about Safirs. They only knew about Shapiro. So he was Peret Shapiro. Where was he born? He was born in a part of Poland that was probably Russia when he was born. I figured that he must have been born about 1834 or thereabouts. I mean, I may be a little bit off, but uh, he was an orphan at the age of 18 mm -hmm. so that he was immediately conscripted into the Russian army where he spent 18 years. Uh, in those days, it was really difficult for a man of his uh, religious persuasion. Excuse me, please. Yiddish? Sure. Anyway, in his 18 years in the army, uh, he had occasion to uh, save a general who, whose horse reared and almost threw the, uh, the general this. off. Somehow or other, he lost an eye. Mm -hmm. However, when he was given the cross for his bravery, he spit it on, he had gut angespeit, and he threw it into the river. Uh, and the story is, and I have no reason to doubt my grandfather, that he never tasted meat in all the years he was in the army. And believe me, that was a long, long time not mm -hmm. to be able to eat properly. But that's what he did. So he got out, and then he met a woman and got married. I don't know her name. However, unfortunately, she died very quickly within the spirit, space of perhaps a year or even less. This lady had a niece by the name of Rivalea Levinson. Where, where did they get married? In Europe. You know where and which where. Either Suvalk or Yagostov. I'm not sure which it was because I have been to neither of them, so I'm not very sure. But it was in that time, it, within that time frame, within that space. And she was 16 when she got married, and he was. Uh, Must have been 40. He was a lot older. At least 40. If he was he 30, was, he was close. He was sure. close to 40. He was over 36, oh, so sure. he's probably 38 mm -hmm. or thereabouts. They proceeded to raise a family, of which my father was the first. Uh, things were really quite bad. Grandpa, what, what was your father's name? My father's name was Abraham Mordechai Max, Max A. Shapiro. Uh, and my father was only four years old when the family finally came here, but in the interim... Is that where your father was born? My father was born in Yagostov. It's called Augustavia, and I believe it's supposed to be four miles from the present German border. This was an area where today it was Russia and tomorrow it was Germany. I mean, they were always fighting over each other. Mm -hmm. you know, so that it really was a very bad, very bad place to be. Well, we didn't, uh, we Grandfather didn't was a, a smuggler, by the way. He smuggled mm -hmm. tobacco from Germany to Poland. But it wasn't enough to make a living, so he finally went steerage to the United States, where he had a stepbrother by the name of 
I don't know, I've the name in it. I'm sorry, I'll think of it later. You and know what year he came to the United States? Yes, he came this time. The first time he came was a rat, was within maybe 1885 or six. Uh, then his stepbrother, Dworsky was his stepbrother's mm. name. And he was in the cane bottom business. He loaded my grandfather up with cane bottoms, gave him a little bit of money, told him the prices of the cane bottoms, took him to South Ferry, put the nickel in for him, and sent him off to Staten Island. And told him when he threw selling what he had, the best thing for him to do was to ask for the ferry so that he could come home. So, mm. so Grandpa Parrots started selling and walking and selling and being rebuffed and selling. Meanwhile, he walked the entire length of the island, which is 12 miles, and he had no more cane bottoms, so he asked for the ferry. The ferry was there, but it wasn't the ferry he wanted. This was the ferry from Tottenville to Perth Amboy. And when he got off the, the uh, ferry, there was this big red-haired cop. And he, he says, ferry, he, he knew he wasn't in New York. So the guy was smart enough to take him to a Jewish family. At that time, there were eight families in Perth Amboy. And they welcomed Grandpa with open arms and just and then the thought that we had a son, see, because by that time my father was born, he was born in 1882, the thought that he, that the two of them would come and they would actually be able to have a minion. So they made him promise, and he did, that when he came back to the United States after coming from Europe, going to Europe to pick up his family, he would come to Perth Amboy. And that's how I came to Perth Amboy, because my father came, and by that time there was a sister, Aunt Dora, mm -hmm. and they lived in Perth Amboy, where my father went to high school, graduated, top of his class, 1902. <laughs> he was the class orator. And what do you think he spoke about? Race prejudice. He was always ahead of him, ahead of everybody else. Of course, the race prejudice of which he spoke mm -hmm. was the Chinese Exclusion Act. See, mm -hmm. at that time, they wanted to get all the Chinese to stop coming to the United States. After they had helped build the Northwest, mm -hmm. then they didn't want them anymore. So uh, he spoke up against that. That was his oration when he was uh, the class orator. They didn't have valedictorians, mm -hmm. only orators. So Pop went to high school, graduated in 1902, and uh, the first job he had was with <coughs> Cheeseboro, which is a uh, manufacturing company, and <coughs> it didn't work out too well. He was only a little fellow. He was five foot four and skinny, and uh, <coughs> they had all these big Pollocks, you know. Oh, I shouldn't say Pollock. Oh, no, that's not Pollock. That's Pol. not politically correct. <laughs> that's right. They, well, they were Pollock, believe me. <laughs> but, no, you but, have to say it in Yiddish for a yeah. while. But one day, uh, he happened to be going past uh, mm. uh, Baum's uh, Bakery, and they had, where they had flour barrels. And he got the uh, He said to them, what do you do with these? He said, we throw them out. He said, oh, I'll take them. And from that, he started into the barrel business. And eventually, of mm. course, it grew into quite a nice business. And then in 1908, when he was 23, he met my mother. It was an arranged marriage. That is, it was arranged to the extent that he was introduced to her. What's your mother's name? My mother's name was Sadie Grodetsky. Where were they married? They were married in Brooklyn. I don't know where. They were supposed to have been married on March 17th, but because it was St. Patrick's Day and the hall was high, was rented, they had to be married March 10th, which is just as well, because I was born exactly 10 months later to the day. <laughs> well, my son was too. See that? There you are. It's in the family. What's your son doing? And uh, oh, really? they yeah. came to live in Perth Amboy. 
Is he? And my grandparents, no, my no, other no. grandparents, oh, also coincidentally had come to the no, United States in 1888. Oh, okay. Right after where, where the blizzard they, of 88. Where did they come from? I know from? a guy who was... They came, my mother came, uh, my parents, grandparents came from Katrinoslov, which I understand is in Russia. My grandfather was a shelter. And uh, it's your mother's parents. My mother's fa uh, father. Uh, and my people. grandmother was a very, they were very pious Jews. And my grandmother uh, wore a shadel all her life. Came to me and Just like you? Just like me. <laughs> and uh, they lived in Brooklyn. They, they had uh, eventually, well, so by the I time I was old enough to know, uh, like in 1913. Did somebody like you? He says, yes. 1914, oh. they had a store on 23 Graham simple. Avenue in Brooklyn, mm -hmm. Williamsburg, I know it is, yeah. and they lived on Flushing and, Avenue, uh, and then the later they Rosemary. lived closer on Graham Avenue and, in an apartment, uh, one of these, what do they call those I long, see, I have old, them. I uh, think what they call them, about a year ago, the year special ago, apartments, you know, that they used to have in those days, the railroad flat, railroad yeah. flat. that's yeah. right, yeah, mm -hmm. and, uh, yeah. He also it does. Was, uh, it was quite. Things were different in those days. No, I always remember. You know, it was 1913, just before know. World. Well, well what when mean? the my war was on in Europe, but not here. And my mother and I came to visit and my grandparents. It was the middle of the winter. And, and it's uh, yeah, 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 picking up. Of course, talking. Time. Sure. You you two will have to shut up while I'm talking. Otherwise, it's no good. Go inside and talk. Anyway, we. It was a very bad day. It started into snow heavily, and my uncle, may he rest in peace, the one who was named after my his grandfather, uh, said, Sadie, don't go home. It's bad weather. Bad. No, mother had to go home. Mother was very much like me. I, I'm very much like my mother in that respect. She decided she was going home that night. She went home. We never got home because we got the Perth Amboy, but the... There was such high snow that the great crossings, there were two of them that we had to pass to get to our house, were impassable. So we wound up in a house on the other side of the tracks, and the chances are that it was Bill's mother's house. Oh, that's unbelievable. I'm not sure, but it's very possible because uh, they lived in that area, and at the time, I don't remember who was there at the time, but it's very possible that they did. We did live, wind up in, in your mother's house. So there you are. You see, I'll I don't know how we're related, but I know that we uh, we knew each other a long time ago. I'll ask around inadvertently. See what you can find out. Oh, thank you. What else I'll do you want to know? Because <laughs> he's not the only undertaker right now. Thank you. Boy, this is going to be some beautiful picture. Okay. All right. Now, you have a VCR here. My son has. Oh, yeah, so what happened that. with your grandfather with all his marriages? That was interesting. Oh, my grandfather? Yeah. See, the first marriage, she uh -huh. died ahead of time. Uh -huh. She died very young. Then my grandmother was 16. Mm -hmm. When my grandmother was 46, in other words, when she was 30 years old, right. she had contracted stomach cancer, oh, boy. and she died. After three years, mm -hmm. my father did everything that was known in those days yeah. to help her, but it was a lost cause. After that, he married another woman. Her name was Hyasura. And What's the last thing? I have the slightest idea. And Where'd they get married? They got married. They must have gotten married someplace. I don't know. I really have no idea. Well, I don't remember it. it. Was, it was it New York or Jersey? It very was, likely was in New Jersey. You see, when my grandmother died, uh, she died in 1913. Mm -hmm. I was four years old. I remember going to the cemetery. I was in a carriage, you know, there was horse and carriage, right. and I remember distinctly, I must have been making a lot of noise, as usual, and I, they tried to shut me up. That, that I remember that mm -hmm. part of the funeral, but so that very shortly thereafter, my, my grandfather got married. Mm -hmm. So if they, he got married in 1914, we'll say, mm -hmm. he, Hyasura lived for 17 years, mm -hmm. so 1914, 24, 19... 31. 31. She died. And he married again, but she didn't last very long at all. <laughs> this guy's like the kiss of death. Yeah, I guess <laughs> he was really quite a Lothario, wasn't he? So anyway, uh, 
By that time, by 1931, we had moved here, see, and mother wasn't, my mother wasn't in good health, although she lived to be such an old, old lady. Uh, but at that time, she was not, she was in poor health, so that uh, when he wasn't married, there was no question of his coming here to live, because mother was in no condition to take care of anybody. She worked, she where, 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 where are your parents buried? My grandfather is buried on Perth Amboy on the cemetery, the Hebrew Fraternity Cemetery, which Hebrew Fraternity, my father, started. Mm -hmm. You know, everything works into everything. Mm -hmm. But when my father died, mm -hmm. I called them. They didn't know, they didn't know who Max A. Shapiro was, of course, it was many years later. Mm -hmm. So Bill and I had bought four plots here in this cemetery, and that's where he is. Which cemetery is that? Uh, it's in it's called Menorah, I believe, Menorah Cemetery. It's in Clifton. Mm -hmm. It's accessible right off the uh, A mm -hmm. on the way to New York. You know, very easy to get to. Just to say, unfortunately, I'm sorry to say, I, I don't ever go. You know, I can't bring myself to go to the cemetery either. I don't know what that is. I have my father right up on the on the on the uh, mantelpiece mm -hmm. there. What do I need to go to a cemetery for? Maurice goes. He goes well, away. Well, uh, to each his own. Very good. Very nice. Very fine. I go to shul on Shabbos. That's enough. That's good. That's right. And uh, I don't. I don't say. I don't do the yard site. Well, I do yard site, but uh, four times a year I don't say it. I say it when it is. Mm -hmm. And the other four times, maybe I go once or twice, if it happens to coincide with. You have a yard site calendar for your family that you keep. Uh, yes, we have. My mother and father are up on the, on the wall. Pardon me, the brass, you know, the brass, you mean the brass thing? Pardon. They're visiting. Look, They're visiting. it's a half, it's a half, half hour okay. on the subway, a half hour on the, on the, what do you call it? Lights, the, camera, action. Yeah. yeah we got to give Willie a chance now. This time I'll keep quiet. <laughs> uh, I'm going inside. Now, what do you want me to start? On. We go inside. Let them talk. Okay. Uh, my aunt Jenny said, rest in peace, had a daughter living in New Brunswick, my daughter Bella. Mm -hmm. She would go visit. How she would travel from Bushwick Avenue, Brooklyn, to uh, New Brunswick, she would take the subway <coughs> on Myrtle Avenue and, uh, and change over to the subway, get off at South Ferry, take the ferry to St. George, take the train to Tottenville, then take the ferry across the uh, over to Perth Amboy, walk up the hill on Smith uh, uh, on Smith Street, I think. And then take the bus to New Brunswick. And one day she says to me, "Willie, you have to go with me. I got a big bundle, yak yak, you know." I said, "Okay." So I took her the way I went. I'm very happy. We took the subway to Penn Station, got on the train to New Brunswick, and we were there. As after we got off, she says to me, I don't like to go this way. And that's the way she liked to go. She went, she went the way she knew. Huh? She went the way she knew. Yeah. It was the way she knew. Well, she was a terrific gal, though. I eat out. I don't eat. That's uh, your grandmother. Your grandmother. My grandmother in law, yeah. Grandmother. I, rem I, rem I met her. The story was. It's a short story. Yeah, well, I can always drag a story out. <laughs> you want to drag that story out, sweetheart? Come over here. No, no, no. No more. That's enough. Yeah. As a matter of fact, when I. You want to talk a little about your parents, your grandparents? You want to talk about my parents? Yeah. I was there to talk. My mother died. I was 21. I barely remember her. My father was. <coughs> Got married uh, twice after my mother died. You remember who who the women were? The names of who? Oh Jesus! There was a Mrs. Silverman, and there was a uh, the last one. Like, her name began with a W, and I can't remember because I wasn't living with them. And when I came to my father and said I was going to get married, he said, no, you're not. You're too old to get married. You're not going to get married. I told him who I was going to marry. And he looked at me in disbelief, but he believed me when it came to the wedding. As a matter of fact, uh, Froma made peace between my father and myself because we had a misunderstanding. 
And I remember like it was yesterday, uh, this was 53 years ago. I said, what about your father coming to the wedding? I said, I don't care if he comes or he doesn't come. He says, we're not going to play ball that way. He's your father, he's coming. And she made peace between us. So when I got out of his service, and I uh, went to work, I started my own When business. did you go into the service? Huh? When did you go into the service? 42, 1942. Where, 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 where were you stationed? I uh, was stationed uh, for a while in New York, and then I was stationed in, Pan in Panama. And uh, when I got out of service, I had a job with the VA Veterans Administration, which, uh, my way of thinking, uh, and I was right, it wouldn't last too long, so I got out of that and I went into business. And Froma would say to me, I would come home, and this was the business where I had to get up at half past two, three in the morning. So did you see your father this week? I said, no, Father Pop lived in Brooklyn. I said, you're going to go see your father tonight. I said, come on, i got to get up at half past two. She says, I'll drive and you'll sleep, and that's the way it was. Where did he live in Brooklyn? Uh, hey, 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 yeah. Where did my father live in Brooklyn, the last apartment? In, in, huh? in the Red Hook District. In the Red Hook District. So, uh, and uh, she, I would come home and she would say, hey, your dad needs a pair of pants, dad needs a coat, you need this. So I would yeah, get him and yeah, go see him. When did your father die, Dina? You know? What year did he die? Remember? Uh, 19... Uh, let's see. Four years old, and he was but died around 55, 56. And that's a uh, story. Remember your grandparents? But the only one I have, I never knew my grandparents. The only one I, I know is the picture that I showed you. I never knew them. Because uh, I knew my grandmother on my mother's side, but that was it. So. Then I met, uh, when I met Froma, I know 10 minutes after I uh, met her, I knew I wanted to marry her. That's the way to make decisions. I always have. <laughs> My uh, best decisions were made, not thinking about it, but made right on the spot. Mm -hmm. On the spur of the moment. And they were good, usually they were good. Froma Froma has been more than a right-hand person to me. To, of course, even after 53 years, I still think that the day rises and sets with her. That's very nice. Yeah. And if you ask me if I would do it again, I absolutely would. With the same gal. So. That's very nice. Yeah. I like that picture up there. We have to... Now you can tell the story about the picture. You want to tell the story about the picture? Oh, you want me to you want the yeah. story about the picture? Oh, yeah. <clears throat> we were having uh, company for dinner one summer night back in 63. <clears throat> and our guest says to us in February, our grandson is going to be by mitzvah. And we're invited. And I told her that in February, when I said grandson's bar mitzvah will be my 50th year since my bar mitzvah. And uh, my son said to me, do it again. And Frober said, that's a good idea. I said, it's not a good idea. I won't do it. And one day she came home, she says, he spoke to the rabbi, and the rabbi thought it was a good idea, and I'm going to be bar mitzvah in... February at that time. So I went to the rabbi, says, you got me in trouble. He says, right, you're going to be by mitzvah, and we studied. And February came, and I got by mitzvah. And I made a, pre a stipulation, is that 63, I didn't have what I wanted, I'll never have it. So any, pre any monetary presents that I got would go to, uh, to the shul. And we had about 200 people, uh, Jew and Gentile, 
at this uh, party and I gave the shoe for $1,800. And I have a Gersha friend who uh, bought a couple of uh, Sidurim for the shoe. So that's the story of my second Bar Mitzvah. Third, we'll talk about the third the Bar Mitzvah. And my third one, I was 83. Again, my family, uh, God bless them, dared me and I did it. And I had a Bar Mitzvah. I just read the Haftorah, and, and that was it. And the same Goyesh of Friends, who uh, gave us a couple of more Sidurim. What's your Bar Mitzvah Parsha? You remember? Uh, I can tell you the, the, story, the story of uh, Elijah hmm. and the Baal. Matter of fact, uh, we were in Israel, we were in Haifa. And we found a spot that the, where the Bible said that this incident actually took place between uh, uh, Elijah and the Baal. It was interesting. Yeah. yeah it's page... Uh, I forget already. And uh, that's it. I tell you that's that's another story. I can tell you stories about the Hippodrome. Did you ever hear about the Hippodrome? Mm -hmm. Bill, uh, Bill, mother, my mother and father went to Brooklyn to see their parent, mother's parents, my grandparents. So naturally, I had to come along because see, there's a big gap between me and my next sisters, almost seven years. So wherever they went, I always went along. You know, in the old days, Saturday night, they didn't go out. They stayed home and taught me Yiddish. We used to play a game. We called it Yiddish. And they would have a, a, a uh, we played with pennies. And somehow at the end of the evening, I had all the pennies. You know, it was a very nice game. So the same thing when we went to, uh, to Brooklyn to see Grandpa and Grandma. So... Uh, they went one evening, they all went out, my grandparents and my mother and father, and they left me home with my Uncle Sam, that's the artist. Mm -hmm. So Uncle Sam uh, was, uh, I must have been maybe four or five, and he was about uh, 15 or 18, so, oh, maybe he was 18 by then. Mm -hmm. So he said, come on, come on from, I'll take you out too. They, they never called me Froma until I was uh, going, ready to go to school, so it must have been under seven. So he took me to the Hippodrome. At one time, the Hippodrome was a very uh, famous place where they had acts of all kinds. It was really a... Where was it? In Manhattan? In Manhattan, someplace in the 30s, I believe. So we got home. I don't remember whether it was before or after the folks, but in any case, he didn't want us to make any noise. So we went up the fire escape to get into the house. Luckily, there was a window that was open. <laughs> My Uncle Sam, may he rest in peace, he was a, quite, a, quite an artist, you know. He did a lot of, uh, he gave uh, each of his sisters and brothers uh, paintings that he had made. But this one he did for what, hey. What did he do? Oh, he got paid he, for this picture? Oh, yes. Your father paid him? My father paid him. My father wouldn't take anything for nothing. Uh, what did he do? He was an artist by profession? He was an artist by avocation. Uh, my grandfather had a uh, stationery and wool and toy store on Graham Avenue in Brooklyn. Mm -hmm. And Uncle Sam was the youngest son. So... He was the one, you know, as, as the children left. You know, I work uh, pretty close to Green Avenue now. I mm -hmm. work in uh, Greenpoint. Oh, yeah.